Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church for this first Sunday of Advent. Please hear these words from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill a promise of longing, a promise of hope, a hope that calls us home, our true home, where we're welcomed and loved and included where there's justice and equality and peace. It's time this Advent season, time to go home. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope, our strong hope that there is a way to go home, to a home in Christ, and it starts with us. It starts here and it starts now. It's time to go home. It is traditional that on this first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope. 
In the midst of so much pain and sorrow, given the tragic event at the Waukesha Christmas Parade last Sunday, our community needs hope more than ever. To keep the grief and loss of our community before us, we will also light a candle for each person who died from the event. People of faith, prepare for the coming reign of Christ. As we gather to pray and sing and listen, we long for a spirit of anticipation and hope to fill us. The days are surely coming, says our God, when justice and righteousness will prevail. May our worship illuminate our hearts and minds, freeing us to respond faithfully to God's call in the days to come. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn.
let us enter into a time of prayer. God of changing seasons, as the wind grows colder and the days grow shorter, you have replaced the song of the robin with the song of the chickadee. The warm palate of fall has been changed to the cool palate of winter. We greet this season with anticipation as we welcome Advent and the coming holiday season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are a city in mourning after the tragedy last Sunday at our Christmas parade. We seek to find answers where there are none. We seek your comfort and guidance through this difficult time. Help us to bear this burden of grief and find security in your loving arms. Today we pray for the victims of this tragedy. Jackson Sparks, Tamara Durand, Virginia Ginny Sorensen, Wilhelm Hospel, Leanna Lee Owen, Jane Coolidge. Please be with their families and friends as they are faced with this egregious loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, today we ask healing for Betty Strang, wife of Bob and relative of Scott Mayrose, who was in the parade and is hospitalized with severe fractures in her skull and had surgery Sunday night. Declan Steffen, six-year-old grandson of Walt and Diane Smith, who is healing from a traumatic brain injury from an accident on a school bus. We join the family in praying that there are no long-term complications. For Diane Scrobus, healing from COVID and grieving the death of her sister. For Wayne and Jan Radabau, as Wayne has entered home hospice. For people with seizure disorders, that they will find relief from treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus has taught us to love our neighbor, so today we join with downtown churches praying for the United Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Waukesha and their pastor, Reverend David Kramer. May they continue to be blessed in their mission and ministry as they use their diverse gifts for a common vision of a just world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we are thankful for the pl flowers on the altar from John Klecker's funeral service yesterday. We also pray for Paul Gable, who passed away suddenly this week. Help us to remember all those who grieve, including the families of John's and Paul's. We also pray for Pastor Susan and husband Brent as they travel back home this coming week from New Orleans to see their son John and his girlfriend Angela. For all those prayers, spoken and unspoken, we raise up to you our blessings, struggles, fears, and troubles in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now hear our prayers, not of a voice alone, but of hearts joining together as one voice, praying the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
today's reading is a reading from Luke 21, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. You don't want to turn on the morning national news and hear the name of your city. You just don't. We have heard of tragic events taking place in other places over and over and over, and we have felt bad. We have prayed. We have donated. But when it happens in your own community, to people you know, it becomes really real. We don't know of anyone from First United Methodist Church who was injured at the Waukesha Christmas Parade last week. We do know that some of you were there. Some of you saw horrible things. Some of you know people who were injured. Some of you had connections to people who died. Perhaps some of you were like me, safe at home in your pajamas. But most of us have spent the week watching and reading and talking about the events of last week's Sunday. What happened on our streets? Streets where we have driven Streets where we have dined and shopped and walked, and some of us even lived. There are no words. No words that, he that heal bodies that have been injured. No words that erase the traumatic images etched on people's brains. No words take away the grief that families feel when they've lost a loved one, but especially in such a senseless way. 
It is all so heavy. It's all just too much. And all of this happened as we are already reeling from a global pandemic and a virus that keeps mutating. Racial injustice and political division in Afghanistan and inflation, school board decisions, gun violence, climate change, and then there's your own personal illness and grief or financial hardships or relationship struggles, and it is all too much. And yet we gather on this first Sunday of Advent and light a candle of hope. And we look for hope in God's promises. We look for hope in our relationship with Christ. We look for hope in community. And we look for hope in our scriptures. Now, if I was going to handpick a scripture for us today, I would not have picked the one that Sarah read. I'm not sure what I would have picked, but probably something that felt a little more comforting. But perhaps this scripture from our lectionary for the first Sunday of Advent really is a good fit for us today. The Gospel of Luke was written shortly after Roman troops ransacked the city of Jerusalem. The troops destroyed the temple, and historians tell us that over a million people were killed. Most of them were Jews. Some who were spared their lives were then taken as slaves and spread throughout the Roman Empire. And this particular violent and horrific experience that they had was to groups of people who were already oppressed. For Jewish and the early Christian communities, it was all just too much. One of the ancient literary responses to the too muchness, the response to oppression and devastation, is something we call apocalyptic writing. Apocalyptic writing envisions God's imminent intervention and rescue. When everything is so out of control and there's no way to see a human-created path out, writers of apocalyptic literature used cryptic and poetic language full of ominous signs and yet it was meant to reveal God's bringing of a new era. God's work at turning everything around with justice and redemption. And this apocalyptic literature is spread throughout the Bible, and it's intended to bring hope when all hope is lost. I think a lot of us are familiar with that feeling of hopelessness these days. We can't seem to agree on anything, surely not a path forward. We long for a big intervention from God, and yet we don't see that happening, and we may say, where is God in all of this? Now, I'll tell you that I don't personally 
feel very drawn to apocalyptic literature. Uh, I, one of the big reasons is it has often been used by some Christians to create bizarre end time predictions. I also don't really connect spiritually to Jesus arriving on a cloud. But I did appreciate some writing by Reverend Willie Duane Francois III, a Baptist pastor, who said this about the text. What if the symbolism of Jesus' depiction of hopeful chaos is not about some distant time of ultimate endings? What if Jesus is snatching us out of our desire for another world by asking us to face the jarring details of this one? I see Jesus making a case for the fragility of life and the fierce need for people of faith to show up with stamina and courage. Last Sunday, we saw the fragility of life. We were faced with the jarring details of this world. But the hope I find in this scripture is that in the face of the distress of the nations and the roaring sea and chaotic waves, Jesus says, when you see these things taking place, the kingdom of God is near. So we had a prayer vigil on Monday night at 5 o'clock, and I know some of you were there. And I, I believe it was Father David Simmons, the Episcopal priest from St. Matthias, who shared a quote that I've also seen all week on social media platforms, and it's from Mr. Rogers. He said at some point to his TV audience, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news, and my mother would say, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And I'm thinking that that's just another way of saying the kingdom of God is near. Look for the kingdom. The kingdom of God is near when the worst instincts of one individual awaken the very best God-given instincts of so many people. When police officers step in front of a moving car trying to get it to stop, the kingdom of God is near. When people hold people who are injured that they don't even know and drive them to the hospital in their own cars, the kingdom of God is near. When medical professionals rush into the streets to help the injured or show up at the hospital on their day off just because they know they'll be needed, the kingdom of God is near. When people contact us from other cities, other states, even other countries, to express their support and concern and love to us, the kingdom of God is near. When schools open and teachers and counselors are available for traumatized kids, the kingdom of God is near. When money comes pouring in for victims, the kingdom of God is near. When our two senators 
a Republican and a Democrat that could not be more different, work together to create and issue a joint statement, the kingdom of God is near. When our clergy group, the Association of Waukesha Congregations, mobilizes city, school, business, nonprofit, and faith leaders to orchestrate a safe and meaningful prayer vigil attended by thousands, the kingdom of God is near. I know some of you were at Cutler Park on Monday night, but I wanted you all to know that even if you weren't there, our church was there. We gave away all our Christmas Eve candles. Don't worry, we, will, we have the new ones on order, so we, w- we should have candles for Christmas Eve. People from our church handed out handouts that had been made up for, uh, with resources for people who needed support. In addition to Pastor Susan and me, four members of our congregation made themselves available at the park. People that had been trained in counseling in times of grief and trauma so that if there was anyone that wanted to pray or talk, People were available. Our building partner, Healing Hearts of Waukesha County, was represented there, and our very own Tom Ajak provided music. In this divisive time, there was such a spirit of goodness and cooperation. Businesses provided free food and water. We were led in prayer by Christians from various denominations as well as a Sikh, a Jew, a Muslim, and a Unitarian. That time in the park where thousands were gathered, it didn't matter what your age was, your political persuasion, your education, or wealth, or race, or religion. The kingdom of God was palpable. Every week we pray, thy kingdom come on earth. In the face of everything that's wrong, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is on earth. As people of faith, there is a fierce need that we show up with stamina and courage. Let's be alert, and let's look for the kingdom. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today in the sanctuary and online. If you are here at the church, please join us after worship for the hanging of the greens. We will decorate the sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. 
It is also an opportunity to just spend time together in community, and that is important for us. Because we are decorating a little differently this year, please check with John Schaefer for details. Just a reminder that we have two devotional books for Advent available in the hallway as well as Intergenerational Advent Workshop on December 12th during Forming Faith and a Zoom Advent Study on December 13th. You can sign up for these on the podium in the Asbury Room, on the website, or by calling the church office. Our Advent outreach tradition begins today with our missions giving tree. We will again be supporting United Methodist Children's Services in Milwaukee and the Hope Center in Waukesha. You can select gift tags from the tree in the Asbury Room. They're marked with specific items needed by these ministries. Gifts need to be returned to the church office or under the giving tree by Sunday, December 19th, so they can be delivered before Christmas. For those of you worshiping with us remotely, we have some online giving opportunities. These may also be an option if you're uncomfortable shopping in stores or are limited for time. United Methodist Children's Services and Hope Center requested specific gift cards. You can donate through your regular online giving by designating Christmas gift cards, and we will purchase and deliver the gift cards for you. Or use one of the QR codes on the screen or in your bulletin to order from Amazon wish lists. We have lists for United Methodist Children's Services and Hope Center, as well as one shared by the Waukesha County Overflow Shelter. Ordered items will be delivered directly to these organizations for you. The Secret Angel Gift Shop is in need of items, especially blankets, which can be dropped off in the main hallway. Volunteers are also needed. Please sign up in the main hallway or contact the church office if you can help. I want you to know about two things happening here on Sunday, December 5th. First, the Yarn Twisters will have a display of their quilts in the Asbury Room for us to enjoy. Also next week, Nikki Rodriguez, board-certified psychiatric and mental health nurse, will lead family conversations at 10.30 in the dining room on mental health basics. We are grateful for and ask for your support of the mission and ministry of First United Methodist Church. There are offering boxes in the hallway on your way out of church. You can also mail in your offering or give through our website or app. If you have not yet made a financial commitment to the church for 2022, we also ask that you make a pledge by returning a paper form or by making it online. As we respond to God's abundance with generosity, please join me in our prayer of dedication. Giver of all good things, as we offer these gifts to you, open our eyes to see more clearly all that we have been given and all that we have to give. Stretch our capacity to give of ourselves, our love, our companionship, and our material resources wherever they are needed. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our closing hymn.
and I just want you to hear it with the ears of what we've gone through. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break. And all things can be mended. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go. Love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The world waits in the darkness for the light that is you. Amen. You may be seated for our postlude.